Welcome, fine folks at Vestark asked me to do a video review of their Gen 7 MiG-145. It's a multi-process machine that'll do flux core welding, it'll do stick welding, and it'll do TIG, if you have the TIG torch. You don't get the TIG torch with this here. This is one of the lowest priced machines out there. Uh, you've got the welding machine and then a separate box. You get all the goodies there. Uh, it comes with a spool of the flux core wire, .030. You've got the instructions. You get uh, extra feed roller. You get some extra tips. This is the stinger for the stick welding here. Good firm action on the spring. And you've got the working clamp. And that's a, a good working clamp. I, that's better than some of the more expensive machines that I've seen here. So bravo to Best Arc. You also get a shoulder strap and you get a little tool to remove the tips on it and service that stuff there. Uh, you get uh, the instructions with it. Tells you all the little do's and don'ts, everything you need to know to get this thing going and get you some sparks, okay? Um, as far as setup, there's really not much to it, okay? Uh, now, looking at the machine, everything is top-notch on it. I mean, there's nothing I'm going to pick on, okay? You've got the buttons that control the different processes on the machine where you can switch between the wire size for the flux core welding. You can switch between the flux core, the TIG, and stick welding. Um, the top panel where you load the wire. One thing I love about this machine here, they got the little feed button there where you can feed the wire. You don't have to press the trigger on the handle there. And here I am looking at the handle or the torch, as some people may want to call it there. Heavy duty, okay? Like I said, this is a very low price machine and uh, it's perfect for a beginner, for home hobby. Uh, you can do some good welding with this machine. Okay, so you're not going to be disappointed. One thing a lot of budget welders do, they cut corners on the torch length, the, the, the hose and the cables. They didn't on this one here. You get about six foot of cable on the flux core gun. You get about six foot on the working clamp and about six foot on the stinger for the stick welding. Set up for the flux core wire is real easy. You want to be real careful that that thing doesn't unwind. So you really got to watch it and tighten that spring down when you feed this in here. So you're just going to feed it in the little tube. You loosen up the drive roller clamp there, slide it into the end of the other feed tube there, and then tighten it up. And then we're ready to go ahead and uh, press that red feed wire button there. And you do that until it comes out the end of the gun. Doesn't take long at all. Now then what I did is I set it up to make sure that we've got the tension set right on the roller there. Uh, if you don't have enough tension to bend the wire, that's what I'm looking for here. See how I bent the wire there? You want to put it against something solid, press on it, and if you don't bend the wire, you don't have enough tension on the roller there. And you want to get it as light as you can to where it still bends the wire. Okay, so let's go over basic operation. You've got your power button here. Let's turn that on. All right, so we've got the adjustment knob here. We've got one, two, three buttons on the front. You have what is called the working clamp. And you have the, the gun. And you have the stinger which is the electrode holder for your stick welder here, okay? So we've got the, the gun here. So let's say we wanted to do some what they call MIG welding. It's, it's flux core welding. Some people call it MIG. Most people when they refer to MIG, they're referring to the, the one that has the gas with it. This is a gasless MIG style welder here. So let's say we wanted to do some uh, of the flux core welding. Okay, so we have the working clamp. We're going to put the connector into the positive terminal here. Okay. 
Now with your flux core, the wire or the electrode is what is going to be the negative, okay? So this is electrode negative. Your working clamp is the positive. And you would, let's say we're going to do some welding on this bad boy here. You would put your working clamp onto what you're going to be, the surface that you're going to be welding on. Okay? Now then, we've got to put this here where it says MIG. We're going to, we've selected MIG. Here. We're using .030 wire. I'll scroll through the selection. .035 and .040. This welder does not have a, have a, a lot of adjustment as far as the feed, the speed of the wire that's being fed. You can also play with your settings to get it dialed in and tell it you're using different wire in order to, to get the, uh, the bead height the way you want it. Main thing with this here is you need to master whatever tool you're using. That, that's, that's true in any, any welding here. It takes a little while to get used to the, the, the tool, in which this case the machine here, okay? So we have 2T and 4T. Now 2T, that means that when you press on the button, it's going to energize the electrode and it's going to stay energized until you release. If we press this again and we put it on 4T, that means that we can press the button and release it and it's going to continue to energize the electrode and continue to feed the wire until we press it again. So that's the difference between 2T and 4T. I'm a 2T kind of man myself. I'm a, I keep it in the 2T mode here. Okay, and then here is your, your uh, amperage adjustment here. Now in the, the MIG flux core setting, you go from 50 amps all the way up to 135. Now you have the Synergic control here. We can press on it and we can go minus 30 on one end. and plus 30 on the other. The instructions weren't that clear. I don't really notice a lot, but just play with it and maybe you'll get used to it and get the hang of it here. It works fine for me. I, as far as I'm concerned, I just leave it zeroed out and then use my amp adjustment here for what, however, however powerful I want whatever setting I want my uh, my welding to be. So that's the MIG setting on here. TIG here, you go up to 135 amps, and you can go as low as 10 amps on the TIG. This does not come with a TIG torch, so if you want to do the, uh, the, the lift TIG or the scratch TIG, you need the TIG torch. And uh, now with your stick welding, you have a choice between electrode positive and electrode negative, okay? With most stick welding, you want to go with electrode positive. That means the stinger you will put in the positive terminal. And the working clamp you will then put in the negative terminal. What's the difference? With electrode positive, you get better penetration. You get more penetration than you do with electrode negative. That's really the big deal. You also have to make sure that the electrode that you're using is rated for electrode positive or electrode negative. For me, I prefer to use 6013 rods here with, with this machine here, 6013, 332nd inch rods, or as well, 7018, I don't think I have, 7018 in the 332nd inch rod as well. I tried some 6011, it didn't like it so much, but that's fine, I'm not going to cry about it. I like 6013 and 7018. Anywho, works fine for me. 
So for the MMA, like I said, you get your electrode set up. Get this in the correct setting. MMA, you go with the stick welding, you go from 20 amps all the way up to 105 amps. Here with uh, your thicker metals, your 3 16 3 8 inch, I bump it all the way up. For 1 8 inch steel and 16 gauge, you can bump it on down to 90 and 75. Okay? And you, you just play with it. If you, you turn it up real high, you've got to move fast. And if you're moving too fast, your bead height isn't high enough. Well, you need to turn it down to where you can move it slower and not burn through. This is an art. You need to practice. And if you're, you're not that well, not the, uh, that accustomed to doing welding, get someone who knows welding to help you and, and get you set up and get the ball rolling so, so you can do the best work that you can do. All right, so we got it on mid, 75 amps. We're gonna do some 16 gauge, three quarter inch steel. All right, let's do some flux core here. Flux core welders often weld very hot. You get a good amount of penetration in comparison to the MIG where you use the gas. Uh, so it, it wasn't overly harsh. As you can see, I got a good weld with this here on the flux core. Uh, stick welding, I'm doing some 7018, 85 amps. You gotta be sure and set the machine to the MMA function on it. I'm going electrode positive. Uh, being a 16 gauge steel, you might even try electrode negative so you don't get such deep penetration. Uh, I was careful to, mainly I was just looking to not burn holes in it. Uh, you can see the weld was irregular. That's me, my shaky hands. I haven't been doing stick welding here so much lately. So there's the issue there. Let's do some 3 16 inch plate with the 7018 and it handled it beautifully. Um, with any welding process, you want to take your time. You want to get your skills up. It's not a matter of just weld and you get a beautiful weld. It's an art form. You have to get your coordination down and, and do it. Uh, the flux core welder handled this thicker 3 16 inch flat bar very well. I would say with the stick and the flux core, I would have no problem doing anything from 16 gauge on up to quarter inch steel. It, it's got plenty of power. One thing I did not experience that sometimes you may experience with a welder, if you keep welding long enough, it's going to overheat and it has thermal protection. Not once did it shut down. I was able to do a lot of welding with this here and not once did it overheat. I didn't sit there and try to push it and see how long it took, but with most welding and fabrication, you gotta stop, you gotta reclamp things, you've got to clean your weld joint and the like. With this here, like I said, overheating was no problem whatsoever. That is a good weld. Okay, so this is a very capable machine. I'm very pleased with it. Right now on Amazon, it's like $129 with a $20 off coupon. So you're looking at $110 for this welder here. It's a great little welder for the job. Is this going to compare with a $2,000 welder? No, because it, it, it's just not as beefy. But everything I, I saw about the machine is, is definitely quality. It's robust. It's well built. It looks like it's going to take plenty of uh, abuse and just keep going here. Uh, I was very pleased with the quality of the welds that I was able to get out of it here. Um, here's some uh, 7018 weld that I did. Here's some uh, 6013. Um, we've got uh, some some of the uh, flux core welding here that I did. Okay, I hope I gave you some good information about this machine. I give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in the machine, I've got a link down below where you can buy it. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. There's a subscribe button down there. I want to thank you for watching. Take care.